Hello everyone. Good morning. So, so good to be here in Berlin. And I just want to start with myself. I'm not from Harvard or I'm not a techie guy. I was a professional athlete and from professional sports now in the blockchain in the hardcore decentralization part infra project. So it's, a, it's been a, a journey. Still here trying to learn from a lot of very smart individuals in this space. Most of you guys are sitting here. So we are on the learning curve. I think the whole industry is on the learning curve. It's a very, very new technology. As I have mentioned before in this speech, we are in the very early stages of the decentralization, the Web 3.0 revolution. And all of you who are sitting here are pioneers in Web 3.0 because we are the early guys in it. So I think 10 years from now, when this wave has taken over the whole internet or the Web 3.0 would have replaced the whole Web 2.0 space, then you can tell to your, uh, your kids and the kids can tell to their um, kids that our parents or grandparents were the pioneers in this Web 3.0 revolution. So I will start with Inery. Um, so Inery is a, is a layer one blockchain and it's specifically designed for the decentralized data management. So there have been, there have been projects who are in this space who try to do um, something like that, but not exactly the full management of the data. It was more either data storage or doing something with the file storage on the blockchain, which laid a foundation of, uh, of decentralization in the data part. Now the question is, um, why Inery? Or why do we need Inery? Because the, as they say, the necessity is the invention, the mother of invention. So why do we invent or why did we come to that? So for that, just let's talk about some fundamental parts. Um, what is the difference between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0? So we had yesterday a very good panel discussing those things. And I think fundamentally, it's very important that I touch that base. So I would say the internet participation which we are having now, that's Web 2.0. So we actually use the applications and other things according to our needs, what we need. The whole user right or the content which we do or which we create doesn't really belong to us. It belongs to the big tech companies. It belongs to corporates. Um, even if we want, we cannot control it. So that's Web 2.0. Then some smart individuals, they actually came to the point saying that, OK, wait. Now it's been enough. Let's go to the next level, a next stage, um, next updation of this part where the users who actually create the content, doesn't matter where, it's on YouTube, where are the real owners of the data, and they are real owners of their participation in the internet. So I should be or you should be actually uh, responsible for the ownership of what do you do on internet, and you should be actually compensated for that participation in the internet. And that's the whole core foundation of Web 3.0. Now Web 3.0, couldn't exist without Web 2.0 because the, the wave, the next, the next thing which is coming was based on Web 2.0 or is based on Web 2.0. Um, and that's the transition phase where we all are in. So for this whole transition from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0, um, what things are needed to do to enable that? So the things that are needed are infrastructure projects, like ours, Inery, there are other infrastructure projects which are there, um, who actually lay the foundation for people to enter the Web 3.0 space. So that's, because of that, um, very, very important now in these early stages are the infrastructure projects which actually give you the, the stage to come and take the participation in Web 3.0, building different decentralized applications, and other things. Now, what are the issues which we are having in Web 3.0 world in this transition period? So what I would say is the, the issues which we are having for the, are if you would have heard that, OK, there had been hacks here, there have been hacks in, in this part, there's been a fiasco now with FTX, there's been a fiasco now with Luna, um, X, Y, Z. 
So all these things are actually bringing a light that, okay, blockchain got hacked, this got hacked, but that's not true. If you see deep down, there's been always centralized protocols or the bridges between the chains which gets hacked. So itself a blockchain like Ethereum or Bitcoin or any blockchain, say the blockchain itself has not ever been hacked until now. It's actually, if it's fully decentralized public blockchain, it's almost impossible to hack it. So that gives Web 3.0 a very strong foundation for anything and especially the data. So we are on the infrastructure side of the Web 3.0, but focused only on the data because I think data is the most important part when it comes to any company. So any individual, what is the most precious thing which we have? Is the data our customer data? Is our banking data, our financial data, our love life data, our private life data? So, and we, were, we are very, very concerned about that and we are very protective about our data. Now, that's where the data should come into Web 3.0 where the end user or, or, a, or a guy who is actually the, using the data is, is entitled to have the full right on his data. So not that the data is in a big tech company or somebody else is using it, but the individual has to actually use the data. Sorry, I have to go with this. Oh, yeah. So now you can see just a little bit of the visuals also. So at the moment, all this data is with the big tech companies and they actually own the data, even if it's our data. And that's what we are focused to change. So we rely, as I said, you on Web 2.0. Then we have two uh, um, options. We have a binary layer one blockchain, and on the top of the blockchain, we have a first decentralized database. Now, why database? Database is actually the brain and the heart of any application. Doesn't matter if it's a decentralized or a centralized application. Um, the funny thing is, at the moment, all decentralized applications, doesn't matter on which chain, it could be in any blockchain, all of them are using centralized database. So what that means, that they have a single point of failure. They are not completely decentralized. I would not blame them because there isn't any decentralized database out there. So Einry is the first one in the whole Web 3.0 space to bring the first decentralized DB. You can see here why the decentralized DB or database management system is important. So secure transfer of the data. The data is then stored on multiple nodes. And if one node gets compromised, the data is, and there's a, there's a gentleman yesterday who said to me, yeah, but the data is on the node. So how do I know my data is secure? Because a node could be anywhere in the world and my data can be compromised. You have to think here that the data is actually fully encrypted by cryptographic hash, and only then it re resides on the nodes. So the nodes have no access to the data. Actually, no one, including the big government agencies, doesn't matter how good they are or hackers, have access to the data until unless they have access to your private key. So if the private key is there, you can access your data. If you have lost your private key, poof, it's gone. So even we cannot or nobody can retrieve it which is a big advantage, but also a disadvantage in terms of that. But this is Web 3.0. So the database management is, it's in technical level, a pretty complicated system to do. We are building now from last three years. We have launched our testnet two and a half months ago, and we got the, I think, a record-breaking success in our test node. We have been, um, registered by 2,400 master nodes in a span of two and a half uh, months, which is, uh, I think, no other blockchain has uh, until now reached that point. It just shows the power of decentralization. The nodes come from 33 co countries. We don't know any one of them, but we have been adapted from the technical uh, community very, very um, strongly. So it's, I think, one of our biggest milestones which we have achieved. Um, we will be coming with the mainnet very soon. We are listed on Huobi with our INR token, which is a pure utility token. Anything you do on the ecosystem, you need to have the token. You want to be the node, you need to stake the, the uh, tokens to become the nodes. And there are 100 other utilities. So just I wanted to give you a brief uh, view of what we are doing and why we are doing 
Um, I don't want to bore you either. I think there's a lot of guys who are lined up to talk after me. So thank you very much, Berlin. It's been nice meeting you, and it's, it's been a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Naveem.